Yes. So, wait. Basically, uh, the technology to harness uh, energy associated from the wind uh, is uh, very common and it was uh, there uh, before uh, the conventional power sources came. Uh, there are evidences about uh, thousand BC uh, that people were using wind uh, power for uh, train riding or sailing. So wind has been uh, probably the major source of energy at that point of time. It's the conventional power which came uh, sometimes during the Second World War, and we started focusing on the conventional power. There was a demerit of wind that uh, it's available on its own. It's not uh, when you need it. And during that period, there was hardly any storage facility of energy. There was no electricity, it was a mechanical power. Before we actually go to the wind power and bring the body basics and the power system, I think those are the things which are part of the agenda. I would like to understand how many of you actually understand about wind. What is wind? Flow of air. Flow of air. Flow of air. Which has a potential to energy. Flow of air. It's a force. It's a force. If you look at the Indian wind map, uh, sorry, Indian map, I'm very bad at this, but you will find the wind potential in a couple of states. Right? Uh, the, these are the states which are uh, in the coastal areas, right? And predominantly, say, Maharashtra, then Gujarat, then Tamil Nadu, a bit of Karnataka, right? Something like that. So, uh, how can we reduce a little bit of volume of this? Yeah, no, it's. So basically, uh, due to temperature differential, uh, there exists a pressure difference because, uh, and how the temperature difference happens is. Two regions. One is uh, when we are talking about the coastal areas. Rajasthan doesn't have a coastal area. Still, there is good wind. Whenever there is a water body, nearby land body, there will be differential in the heating pattern of the earth. And if there is a differential in the heating pattern of the earth, you will find the pressure gradient existing. The moment that the pressure gradient happens, you start getting wind. Right? And that's the reason uh, most of the coastal areas who have the water water body. You have been to uh, some lake also, many or somewhere. The moment you go near the lake, you'll find a very good wind speed. Again, the reasons are same. In fact, uh, if you go to uh, Rajasthan, the desert itself acts as a differential uh, mode of heating. That place has an, a different capability of getting heated faster and getting cooled faster. And because of that also we get certain things. These are all known as the local wind. All known as local wind. But if you look at the situation in our earth, this is the equator and these are poles. 
basically the highest sun rays are there on the equator they are they are because, because they are perpendicular not their intensity is higher they are perpendicular on the earth's surface so this portion gets heated faster and this is inclined so you will not get that and even this earth is not like this vertical it is also inclined so we get seas so what will happen is globally also wind will start moving from equator to the poles right so when we were talking about the local wind there is another concept which is known as global wind and this will this will impact the global flow of the wind over the subcontinent subcontinents and what will happen does all the wind goes to the pole from here no This is 30 degree latitude. Here is 30. Degree. So it goes up to here, then settles down here, then again comes back to this side. And the problem is further twisted because Earth is also having spinning. Clockwise or anticlockwise? Anticlockwise. Anti so if it is anticlockwise, now it will be. Uh, there is a good wind potential in Maharashtra, coastal area, but there should be good wind potential in West Bengal as well. Is it there? Why? It's not there. The reason is global. There may be a local reason. But because Earth is spinning like this, the western coast of India will have the highest potential. But again, there is an issue. If you go to Tamil Nadu, probably it is somewhere here. Tamil Nadu has the highest wind potential. So apart from the western coast, there are wind passes. So when the earth structure becomes in a bad shape, that pass will have the highest convergence of the wind because of the local geographical parameters. So Bupandal Pass and all that places are having the highest wind. And that's the reason the Tamil Nadu has about 3000 megawatt strongness. That's my point. So now we have at far understanding about the wind. Once we have an understanding about the wind, now the main focus is that how to tap energy out of the wind. If you want to tap energy out of the wind, you have to have a device. Which, which is known as wind turbine. <coughs> How much is the energy available in wind? It's a kinetic energy. It's half mp square. We will come to those slides sometimes later. I generally, I, mean, I have been a teacher for 10 years. So I like the board and talks. <laughs> so half mb square, this is the energy available in 
vein. And this has to be tapped out. And how it is tapped out, we have to put a blade. What will happen? Blade will impact, wind will impact the blade and it will rotate and will give its energy and it goes away. Right? So this direction is known as upstream direction and this direction is known as downstream direction. Both type of turbines are there. This part is known as nacelle, this may go put on the saman. So, if you want to extract power from wind, the most critical aspect is the blade. Because wind is going to hit the first object that is the wind blade. And if you have to expect power, if wind is going to hit it like this, this is the blade. Have you, some, some of you who have seen the wind turbine blade, blade is like this and wind hits just like this. Right? If it hits like this, it should create a bending stress. <coughs> Basically, yeah, a But it rotates. Isn't it? When it is hitting like this, it should actually create a bending stress. But it rotates. How it rotates? Why it rotates? Anybody has an answer? <laughs> Please keep your questions asking. Not, not just listen to me. It should be an interactive session. Yeah. The shafts are shaped like this to rotate. Shaft or blade? Blade. This is not a answer given by engineer. <laughs> the answer could have been the aerodynamics. blades. Right? But what is that? What is that aerodynamics by which it happens? Pressure difference is created. Pressure difference is created. Pressure difference is created. No. No. What is that pressure difference? Somebody used word aerodynamics. Basically, if I take a cut section of this, it will be something like this. Right? It's known as aerofoil shape. This is the cut section of the plane. It's essentially something like this. So what happens is that when the wind will pass over it, this part of the wind, wind is divided into two streams. The one which goes on the upper section of the plate has to travel more. And the one which is on the lower section of the plate has to travel less. It means the velocity component is higher here. Right? The velocity is higher here and velocity is lower here. Means the low pressure zone is here and high pressure zone is here and there is a force created in this direction. This is known as lift force.
Just to explain you the lift force. What is lift? Basically, there are two papers. If I blow air, they should go away. What is happening? They are not going away. They are not going away. They are away. They are coming closer. The reason is simple. The moment you increase the velocity, the pressure drop happens and the outer side of these papers are putting a force which is known as the lift force. And the same force acts on the plate. We will come back to a couple of slides, but just be here. So, this is what the lift. This is what the lift for the weight is hitting the plate for pi, and it is getting divided in two sections. But the situation is not like this. This is the situation. <laughs> Had the blade been stationary, then the force would have been like this. It is not the situation. Wind is coming like this and blade is rotating like this. It is something like this. If I am riding a cycle like this and the wind is coming in this direction, the resultant force will be some, not on this side not on this side, this will be tangent, a resultant force of both the things. The same thing happens here. Basically, the resultant force acts, it can be better explained by this graphics. So, this is known as a plane of rotation of my, of my plate. This is the wind turbine plate. Its length is about 40 meters long. 40 meter. This is about 20 meter. So 40 meter. And the this part is known as the leading edge, and this part is known as the trailing edge. So this is the section which we created. This is the leading edge and the trailing edge. So basically. The forces are created, one is known as the lift force and other one which is because of the friction over the blade surface and the wind, it is known as the drag force. So the resultant force is the force which is giving you the rotational torque on the turbine. You can go sometimes later in the details because the data given to me is very long. And but it's quite interesting to go to the aerodynamics. When I speak on aerodynamics, I've taken lectures for two days on aerodynamics. <laughs> so I will not go to the aerodynamics, but just for your understanding, these are the two forces and resultant force will act. But I will come to my same question that had it been aerodynamics and the blade is an important aspect which is converting energy from the wind. And currently I have shown two blades. Had it been three blades, means what happens to the remaining wind which doesn't come in contact with these blades? It doesn't give itself energy. Right? What we are talking is this is the plane of rotation. This is one blade, this is second blade, third blade. So the wind which is going through the empty zone from the wind plane doesn't give its energy to the blades. Agree? 
it means <coughs> if I increase P more grades, probably my efficiency can increase, or I can extract more. Penalty? No. Am I right? No. No. Why? Precision will increase first. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Because the practical eye is more efficient, so this design is more efficient. <laughs> Precision will increase. Means somebody has not yet tried this. Probably, if somebody would have tried this, would have been more efficient. This is what we mean to say. Because of the high pressure, so maybe it is generating higher torque. The three plate design? No, six plate design. Six plate. So means we will get more power. You agree? At least I found one person that agree You agree with me, Nas? Six plate design will be generating more torque as compared to three plate. But the mass will similarly. But sir, that will have pressure on the motor. Motor will pressure on the motor. Motor will pressure on the motor. Torque ज़्यादा है, right? No sir. Build में तो जो force है वो है। वो my question is कि पहले ये build खाली जा रही थी, तो मैंने यहाँ एक plate और डाल दिया। जहाँ जहाँ से खाली जा रही थी, I have added a couple of more plates। Sir, sir sir। Doesn't matter. I can have fiber plate, I can have high carbon fiber plate. Doesn't matter. Mass is in my control. When we started in 1970s, the wind turbines producing electricity, at that time the blade was made of steel. Now the blades are made of resin fiber or plastic. Yes. So I think vibrations will increase because the. No. If I have a solution to vibration. Then it is fine. So because wind will not always be uniform, right? So, no, there are many variations. Variation so, in case of three, wind will remain uniform. That is what you want to say. The chances of uh, variation will be lesser if there are three, is what I am saying. Yes, class. Sir, the more the number of blades, the more will be the turbulence. Once the wind hits the blade. I have a plus design, it will not have any turbulence. In that case, the this will be fine. Sir, so, but the wind does not have so much of energy that it will move. I will show you, I will show you a wind turbine having 110 plates. I am sorry, that is a turbine, it is not a wind Yes. Can you see this turbine? This was a 12 kilowatt turbine developed in 1887 and had 127 plates. <coughs> sir, so the velocity difference for each blade that will be that will decrease if we increase the number of plates. So maybe the acceleration will be first. Have anybody seen a single blade turbine? No, you can see now. This is a single blade turbine. <laughs> On the other side, it is a counterweight. Also. So there have been, there are designs, there are designs which are efficient but it's a single blade design. There are two plated designs, there are three plated designs, and there are multiple plate designs which are still available in the market. I am not saying that the multiple blade design is obsolete. But again, coming to the point, had it been so, I should keep increasing the blades, and you will not find any place by which. The blade even can cross <laughs> in the rotor, and that is known as solidity ratio. When you design a wind turbine, 
you have to maintain certain level of solidity ratio. Solidity ratio is the ratio of the area occupied by plates with reference to total area. That is known as the solidity ratio. Right? So, the best design so far, based on the experience, people realize that three plate design is more stable, more robust, more efficient. And that's the reason we went for three plate design. But you have seen people try 120 something plates as well. So, how it is efficient? Yes. So is it any related to the number of plates in a pan also? Because you don't see only three plates in a pan. Pan? Ceiling pan. The ceiling pan? Yes. Same concept. Like in charred plate, what happens? What happens? What happens? What happens? What happens? Yes. So what is the generally accepted solidity rate? Why is it? When we talk of efficiency, plate turbine efficiency is explained by CP, which is known as coefficient of performance. Which is basically actual power output upon engine. Somebody asked how much should be the solidity rate. It's generally point one for a three plate. So, PA upon PW, PA is basically the power uh, output or the actual power delivered versus how much input, basically the half and the square. And after some two page derivation, you will come to know that the maximum power you can derive is 0.59. It means the maximum power which can be extracted by any of these designs is 59.3%. The maximum power you can extract from a wind turbine will be 59.3%. Power output upon power available with wind 0.59. This is the maximum you can expect. See the base, uh, the denominator is constant. That is uh, one part. And the maximum power you can expect is the function of what type of design you do, right? And for uh, any horizontal excess design, it is the function of the solidity ratio. So you have to have an optimization problem basically. That on one side, uh, you want to keep the solidity ratio minimum. But on the other side, if you reduce solidity ratio, you will reduce number of plates, so uh, the output remains. So that design maximization approach brings you a three-bladed design and the maximum power, it's a two-phase derivation, so I'm avoiding that at all. But that's how it comes, the, the maximum power with a three-bladed design you can extract is about Is this code for three-plate design? Yes. 
because you may have seen a US proposed design that is egg beater design. If you see the plot photographs. This design there is the one will not be governed by the one formula which we produces. But again coming to the fact that Okay, there's a two types of design. This is known as the vertical axis wind turbine. This is known as the horizontal axis wind turbine. Which one is better? <coughs> Height. But you see here, you know the wind turbine. Anybody has a physical feeling that the power is going to be more than Each each blade carries about seven ton mass. Each blade has a weight of seven ton, and the nacelle, this part, has about forty ton. So the total weight of a one point five megawatt turbine. Is about 60 ton, of which 20 ton is rotating as well. And look at the center of gravity. The whole thing is at a half height of about 76 to 80 meters. So, 80 meter pe jaake, three blades rotating. You are designing that. Turbine on your computer. You cannot test it in a laboratory. Look at the condition of the designer who we have first designed and tested. The first megawatt class turbine was developed in 1920s by a gentleman, European gentleman, Smith Putnam. And this turbine worked only for 18 days. <coughs> and the plate fell down because of the fatigue problem. Because in those days there was hardly glass fiber, it was metal plates. The problem is you have it's a it's a detailed engineering to balance the center of gravity of the whole system. The whole system is rotating. And because of wind pressure, there is a bending stress on the tower itself. I have been myself to the nacelle. And when you are there, you are like my uh, swing. That's the situation. So it's a complex design. So that's the reason. If you have an opportunity of putting your generator here, at the ground, will it not be a robust design? Yes. yes. Will be a robust design. Yes, so much harabi ni hoga. So, Americans pushed this design. You will find a of of these types. This design was developed by Guni in America. But there are uh, demerits of this design. Small line. Small line. Small line. Small line. Small line. Small line. The pine is near the ground level. It's not at that height. Yes. That design also fails. So why can't they lift it up? Oh, oh. Couple of meters. That solution had been tried, but there is another demerit of this. Blade of blade. This turbine requires the starting rotating torque. <coughs> it doesn't rotate by its own. अगर जो भी lift force और drag force है ना वो तभी generate होता है तब पहले थोड़ा so your generator had has to act in a motoring mode for some time. Let me tell you uh, some, some history of 
this whole built business. 19, 1970s are the first oil shop. <coughs> the uh, fuel prices increased suddenly and everybody. So US was the biggest market for wind business. And they gave a lot of funding to uh, even before that, if you go uh, about 1920s or 1930s, at the time electricity was not there. And the wind was used for the mechanical applications. What were the applications? The grain grinding and all that. By the time it was Second World War, the steam locomotives came. And you will find in Europe as well as in US that there is a wind mill. I'm not using what the pipe. And we use wind mill, it's a mechanical <coughs> device basically. They used to pump water and store in an overhead tank. So that whenever the steam locomotive will come, the water will be fed to that locomotive. So this became a favorite application there. But over the period when the electricity went to everybody's home and lighting and all, the invent of steam engines and the diesel engine led to a set demise of the wind technology. So you will not find much of the work in the wind business from 1940 to 1970. For 30 years, there was hardly any development. 17, 1970s, again people started thinking that these uh, fuel sources are finite in nature and we need to uh, focus on resources which are available for the long term basis, certainly. And again focus came on it. And in 70s, uh, the US gave the tax credits, the accelerated the run, the uh, manufacturing, uh, customs, and all those benefits, a number of benefits. And they wanted to promote this industry. And many Euro European manufacturers went there. And they started putting this turbine. The banks and financing institutions were highly motivated to do this business as a utility scale with power. Okay. 70s and 80s. It was the regional administration. And sometimes in 80s, they realized that these benefits are being eaten away by the European guys who came because that market was better developed, Spain and Germany and Denmark. So, regional administration gone, a couple of policy groups focused on, no, we should withdraw these. And the Bush administration came and gave up these benefits. In 80s, the wind, some of the leading wind manufacturers, Kentuck Power and all that, which were leading wind developer at that point of time. This is known as California crisis. California is famous for doing the wind business. If you can do a search and you can read about this whole story. So uh, the moment they withdraw, a couple of these European uh, companies who were operating there were gone bankrupt. And uh, they tried to identify some other business houses. And in the 80s, they identified India as one of the business houses. Good for the speed. The government came up with a similar incentive. Because we generally do things 20 years later than what it does. So, when this technology came, there was again a resistance that it's a discarded technology by US. Why we are adopting it? Uh, there was a company which is known as Sud Wind, which was getting bankrupt. <coughs> so these uh, Tantis, they bought that company, Sud Wind, from Europe. They initially bought equipment from Sud Wind. They put up. They were actually having the textile factory and Gujarat government gave one more benefit that if you are having your factory and if you put a wind turbine, after your Saturday Sunday, you power cut and permission to run the industry, 
fill we will have a uninterrupted power supply so they their motivation was that basically when they commissioned these three wind machines they tulsi tanti purno i want to do this business and that's how uh, they went into this business they initially copied the design they took away some manpower from there you know anything we do in india it's not that complicated technology there are three plates a generator uh, air box that's it if you can see it you can do it aap kisi ko bhi india mein expert mistri ko dikhayenge wo kar dega so that confidence is gujaratis had and they got the basic blueprints and everything then they go on such a way that they did like no they the patenting issues this and that. they finally bought the suit and they created a company in early 90s 91 as a suit swap suit is basically the suit push and loan is the loan they got so it's a gujarati plus english word suit swap it's not a american word <laughs> Coming back to the subject. Yes. So once you have the power on the blades, the the nestle has a. You want to have a break? Whenever you want to have, just no, sir. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Okay. I would like to take a five minute break whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got an understanding about bit of the history, bit of the Indian history of wind, bit of the technology. But again, by the end, we move. We have to focus on the policy issue. Uh, right now, most of the countries are considering more on vertical shift. Uh, we will use DNA structure or stock like, wherein they use less space because they feel that when density is more, that will provide more wind than the ones that currently require at least uh, three times the wind uh, the wind blade length that it needs between two the wind. Yes, you are. So, <coughs> I I will come. I am the one who is asking. So. Uh, The question which you ask, if I not the report. So two technologies. The one which I showed was the Darius design, which is based at Brown. But other, apart from horizontal axis, there are vertical axis wind turbines. So when we talk of the vertical axis wind turbine, it means these are the vertical blades mounted on a single pole and they rotate like this, angular. And they are again at the same height, 70, 80 or whatever. I have not connected my laptop, otherwise I would have shown you the clock for the uh, gaps. Uh, so uh, yes, that that design is there, but there are demerits. Even I forgot to tell you about the demerits of Paris design. I can explain you with that design itself. Yeah. So suppose wind is hitting like this, it will hit both the ways, blades. So basically, one blade is giving you torque, but other blade is coming against the wind. If it is rotating like this, हवाओं के चारों तरफ ऐसे चक्कर तो लगा नहीं रही है. It is moving in a single direction. So one blade is in the direction of wind and Another blade is opposite to the direction. That is reducing the power out, basically. I think to uh, counter this, they have used DNA shift, helical shift uh, wind mills. Even in that case, also you have to have. You can't remove the blade. You are you, you are putting a helix so that you use bit of uh, aerodynamics to avoid that. But you cannot fully avoid. And that's the basic reason because of which this design. Could not get that, but yes, it's a robust design. It's not having any horizontal shaft and all that. So it's maintenance free. Look at the situation. I think I will connect my laptop somewhere. 
So this type of design is still used. China, the of manufacturer, I am one of the representative also of one of the company from China who manufactured this type of turbine for telecom tower. Look at the situation here. If you have a tower, hai, you have to simply mount another rotating structure which gives you 12 kilowatt. Even if it is less efficient, but it is giving you power. And can be mounted on the same structure which have been used for some other purpose. That is for cities with high rise buildings. It's ideal for cities of the high rise buildings. Uh, there is a Google building somewhere in the US. It's having the similar wind turbine plates. We have, I have myself installed this plate uh, in one of the, our uh, factory uh, near Sonipat. It is already running there. But they are small and off grid system, kilowatt, 10 kilowatt, 5 kilowatt, 1 kilowatt type of system, not a megawatt. What is the largest size of wind turbine? 2.3 megawatt. You only have one to tell. 2.3. The 5 megawatt is operational. I am not sure about the 8 megawatt which has come up. GE has developed recently 6 megawatt. But other designs up to 10 megawatt are under development. Yeah, a couple of components of wind turbine. So here you are connecting the three plates on the hub, and there is shaft, there is a main bearing, and finally there is a gear box and there is a generator. What type of generator they use? How many are electrical engineers? Three phase AC generator. Three phase AC generator. When you talk of induction generator, or also known as asynchronous generator. When it is running less than the NS, NS is synchronous. When it is rotating speed, synchronous speed is come hai. At that point of time, it is in the motor mode. If N is less than NS, it is in the motoring mode. When the speed goes beyond synchronous speed, it becomes the generator mode. The device is simple electrical motor. When this guy developed the first turbine, yeah, I was showing this design, right? 1.25 megawatt switch put now. 1.25 megawatt right in 1940s we developed. Right? So it was a well developed technology. When we had megawatt class turbines in 1940s, in 80s again we started with 100 kilowatt turbines. <laughs> that is the situation. You see. Very good designs at that, that point of time. So the generator is a simple generator, which is a electrical motor basically, running at 1440 RPM. I'm sorry, I'm taking use of chair while I have undergone for some heel operation about 15 20 days back. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so if you see the earlier designs again, this was a grain grinding mill, had again the aerodynamics and all. And you know what is this? This is known as yaw wheel. 
Let's see a couple of other designs. Look at this design. This is again a green triangle. Uh, the blades are made of gold. If you look at this, this is a better design. Doesn't have any job. Is windmill ka ek operator hota tha. Jaise hi direction wind ka change hoga, he used to pull and push these ropes and he used to bring the turbine in the upwind direction. So he used to keep sitting and observing ki abhi change ho gaya hai that direction that he used to tie it. Then they move to this level of production. The moment there will be a change in that, as long as it is in the upwind direction, these blades will rotate. This will not rotate. This wheel will not. But the moment the wind changes direction, because both both wheels are perpendicular to each other, this will start rotating. The moment this starts rotating, this will give power and bring the whole clock in the upwind direction. Look at the concept. Nineteenth century, we had this level of two perpendicular rotating wheels. One wheel is not rotating. The moment it changes, wind changes direction, it starts rotating. You change the switch. What are the So basically, it's a electrical motor, and this is the synchronous RPM, and. Running at 1440 is the RPM of the motor. And you know at what speed the wind turbine blades rotate? 2 or 3. RPM. 2 or 3 RPM. Certain speed is meter per second. I am asking RPM of the rotor. अच्छा चालीस सेंटीमीटर का ब्लेड दो हजार आठ के ऊपर तोड़ा होगे थ्री टू फोर आरपीएम फोर्टी मीटर का ब्लेड टू फोर वन आरपीएम वो पूर्ति चला जाएगा थ्री टू फोर आरपीएम तो थ्री टू फोर आरपीएम तो इस गेयर का प्लेन दैट चेंजेस द गेयर का प्लेन चेंजेस द Three to four RPM. Three to four. Single digit only, not more than the day. This is what I have drawn is the power curve of a wind turbine. You know when the wind speed is less than three meter, it doesn't produce any power. The moment the wind speed increases, it starts generating power. And once it reaches to around 10 meters or 12 meters per second, you get the rated power of the generator. Is, suppose the generator is 1.5 megawatt, you get power at about 12 meters per second. Then from 12 meters per second to 21 meters per second, the power will remain constant. Rather, this will come down. Power output comes down. Because at a higher speed, you have seen the force of the lift force, the At higher speed, what happens is, the jump is 
means there is a bit of turbulence being created. And because of that, we lose some power. Right? So, but the RPM from here, when it has started rotating to here, when it is at 23 meter to 21 meter, the RPM are fixed. Yeah. Generally, 21 RPM for a particular design. So, if the RPM are constant, power the pressure will be constant. Sure. How many of you agree with him? Power is function of. Power is function of RPM and torque. If RPMs are same at 3 meters per second, then the power out should be 1.5 megawatt only. This curve should not be like this. Right? So basically the torque is varying. RPM is constant, torque is varying. Okay, and torque is function of Newton meter. First distance. Slip. The percentage slip which is created on the motor. If it is induction motor, the percentage of slip. Electrical people will understand that. Better. That is dictating the torque. Apart from this, when the wind hits the blade, this is known as a plane of rotation and the turbine blades are not perfectly horizontal. They are having a tilt. Why they are having a tilt of 5 degree? QT, when wind will hit, it will also create a bending set as we were discussing. If it is perfectly like this, it may hit the pole. And when wind pressure comes, this 5 degree will come to 2 degree, something like that, during the rotation. So, for safety reason, as well as to maintain the bending stress, the plane of rotation or the axis of the horizontal axis of the point is having an inclination of 5 degree. This is the size on which we have talked about. This is a very old slide. Now we have gone to about 86 meters of height I have seen. So uh, we are continuously increasing and 80-90 meters the rotational tire is a very common practice in this of I think at this point we can take a break.